Thank you very much to Miguel and Gabby. We hope that you can stay here because next topic is precisely related to China. Our next topic is Yes, global agreements with China and its presence in Latin America and Africa. And we invited, just as we did last year, our colleague and good friend, Dr. Maricela O'Connor from the Colegio de México, which is our main associate for the presentations of this meeting. She's a professor and full-time researcher in the Colegio de México for Asian and Africa Studies, specialist in foreign trade in Hong Kong and Taiwan, environmental problems in China. She has published several articles, China's position before the Syrian a conflict with Gilberto Conde, China Insurrection and Geopolitics, published by the Colegio de Mexico, Pollution Problems, Response of the Chinese Government in the Environmental Magazine in Campeche, in the South Border Colegio. In 2016, she obtained the recognition from the Foreign Affairs School of Sinaloa Autonomous School. Thank you for your presence here, doctor. And you have the floor. Good afternoon to all of you. It is really an honor to be in this event organized by Dr. Mubarak. This time, my conference is related to that so important presence that we have from China in the American and African continents. In the case of Latin America, let's start in Latin America. In our case, this is not a new relationship. It has been present since the Chinese Popular People Republic was established, but depending on the crossroads that were experienced back then. It was a period when the Popular Republic of China was isolated and joined to the socialist bloc. And the relationships with Latin America will basically be informal. Back then, China started discussing the need to have a revolutionary change to transform regimes in other countries. And we will also see how this impacts. And the conflict that takes place Now, and the conflict between the Soviet Union and China in the 60s. So during the 70s, when we had this change, 
where we have a closer relationship between China and the United States from 60 to 60, sorry, to 78, a lot of the newly created African countries that became independent started to acknowledge the popular people of China and started to have diplomatic relationships. Now from 1978 to 1992, when we have an extension of bilateral relationships, especially after the economic reform in China since 1978. This is going to be a very important period. It is an adjustment period. China starts to project its image before the international arena, and then it will join the World Bank, the IMF, and it will also have some issues with Latin American countries because China starts to have some markets that could be from those countries. But 1990, from 1990 to 2000, we will see the started point of this cooperation agreement framework. And this is related to the economic reform in China, how in the 90s, China undertook that macroeconomic reform in all the ministries, the trade ministry, making China to have a wider projection to the outside. It is a China realizing that its situation at worldwide level is changing. Therefore, they need to abandon that low profile strategy, started thinking on how to create a new strategy according to the new reality and economic growth of China. In the year 2000, it was a key year because this new theory on how China has to see itself in the international arena, how China is holding a wider participation in the global economy. When these restructured state entities start to invest and in going out to other countries, Latin America, Africa, Middle East, this is when they are really targeting to have a special place in all these countries' economies. That's when we see that the development of this new relationship in the economic scenario takes place. During all this period, all the relationships between Latin American countries and the popular people of China starts to adjust itself. Why? Because at the beginning, Latin American countries are seeing how, due to this growth in economic and this trend to export their products, many times their markets are flooded with Chinese products that are competing with their own products. So we will see some disagreements between China and other countries. Some of the countries that is restructuring this relationship with China, trying that this commercial tie becomes deeper, but moreover, implying an advantage for China's economy. That's why we will see that back in 2005, this free trade agreement between China and Chile is signed off. Very 
advantages for both sides. 90% of Chilean products will come to China. 50% of Chinese products do not have import tariff, and some others are excluded with textile and other products. In 2008, that supplementary treaty is signed for services. And up to now, this free trade agreement between China and Chile has been very advantageous for both parties. As we said before, on the 21st century, we have experienced a very important growth in China's and Latin American countries' relationship covering several levels. First of all, the government of China has placed special interest in developing relationships with Latin American countries. Number two, because Latin American countries have realized about the importance in the international economic sector, the presence of China. So China will start to formulate a policy to foster its relationship with Latin American countries. And finally, this is a treaty to discuss bilaterally problems and then multilaterally, which will also allow to resolve all the issues that may arise from this relationship. Therefore, the most important topics will take place at a very high level at president and ministry level. In this sense, China has stressed out that its president, the general secretary of the Socialist Party, sorry, Communist Party, make visit to other countries so both all the presidents and Xi Jinping currently have made several state visits to the continent. In 2014, after two years from Xi Jinping assumed the power, makes a very important visit to Brazil, Argentina, Venezuela, and Cuba, and participates in the BRICS meeting, which is a very important group for China. And as you know, it's Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. So this is also an important bond of China with this Latin American country, Brazil. In this occasion, we had that meeting in Brazil, as I said. Xi Jinping will sorry, took the opportunity to have these bilateral meetings that will be very important to make more strong the relationships. Ah, no, tiene mucha gana. Está, yo, yo, pa, 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 pa. Sí. No, no se oye bien. But the relationship between China and Latin America, it is not only on bilateral terms. China starts to understand that has to negotiate in multilateral uh, arena. And in this partnership, 
Association, CELAC, will be the forum that China will use to have this multilateral relationship in Latin America. This year, in 2015, is where the first Chinese CELAC uh, Congress took place in Beijing. And we will see how this the policy between China and Latin America is formulated with the cooperation plan China Select 2015-2019 because we're going to see how all those ideas are included of the President Xi Jinping and how we, they can make progress in the cooperation relationship between Latin American countries. And one of the highlights will be the, the most invest, investment from China to Latin America, not only to develop the trade relationship, but also to solve the problems of those trade relationships. Also, China is trying that to trying that people will get to know more China, like to have a relationship not only at officials level, but also at students' academics level that will go in a, uh, in a student exchange to China so they will get to know the language, the country. So then they can go back to their countries and guide the businessmen on how they can make business with China. They will understand the culture, the business culture, the Chinese business culture, and this is important. And we will see how the number of scholarship is growing and all the opportunities in terms of training in China, but also they are given scholarships so they can have undergrad undergraduate and graduate and PhD programs. In the second forum of China, CELAC uh, celebrated this year in January in Santiago de Chile City. This is when they start to discuss how Latin American countries enter in this mega project that China has called One Belt, One Road. And this is where President Xi Jinping declared that um, Latin America, it is a natural extension of the new uh, maritime silk route because the at the beginning, this route was not incorporating Latin American countries. They did include uh, African countries, but not Latin America. So in this forum, this were, they start to discuss about the possibility that which Latin American countries will be included in this mega project. And they would be able to receive the benefits offered by this mega project. So in this context, what we are going to see is how the popular Chinese uh, Republic leaders, how, the, the, how will be interested in uh, strengthen the relationships with the Latin American countries. And why is this interest? Uh, the projection of China in the abroad and the growing economy explains that China needs natural resources that let the South American countries have. So for them, it's very important to strengthen this relationship, to carry out agreements so they will, it will have those natural resources. So the, the Prime Minister Li Keqiang in 2015 visited some countries in Latin America. The same thing, President Xi Jinping in 2016. 
And as we said before, the main purpose is to increase trade uh, with China and the investment in infrastructure, infrastructure in the Latin American region. So what is this showing us? Is that like China has a strategy uh, towards Latin America. China perfectly knows what is looking for in Latin American countries. And one of the most important points is this one, to obtain raw material, uh, to be able to have access to the mines in Latin America. And that is why the infrastructure projects will be very important, because this will facilitate the transportation of those products to the coastal areas, to connect with the mines of the interior with the ports, and all those raw material will be transported to China. Now, as you know, since 2012, in China, the, econ the economic model change was discussed in the development of services, and that is why we will see the graphs. In this, in 20. 12 and so on, the, ex, the trade exchange with Latin America was reduced. This was the, an, an adjustment period in which the Latin American countries and China have to find like a break-even point. And in this economic model change will affect countries like Brazil, like Chile, Argentina, that export raw material to China, and it will have important repercussions in their economy, mainly in Brazil, with the, with the reduction of trade exchange with China. China, and this is very important, China has its own uh, structure. The structure in which China puts its priorities regarding the relationship both with Latin America and Africa. So under this structure, we'll, we clearly see what are the objectives of this relationship. In the 21st century and in the last few years, China considers Latin America as a global partner in the global relevance matters. In the current international system reform and in development of the global e economy. What does that mean? China, since, well, for many years has wants to have the reform of international bodies because they are no longer reflecting the, the importance of the countries of those bodies or well, are not reflecting the changes made in the last few years, mainly the new role of China. And this is, in this fight to achieve equ equity, China will have important partners in Latin America that will support its position in those countries. Brazil, again, is the one that most support the decisions of China. And the same thing when China talks about a new international economic order, of a new political order, well, when it speaks in the UN, the Latin American countries and African countries support the positions of China in these matters because they think that they cannot continue having this kind of things when Europeans, European countries have the highest positions in international organizations without taking into account the new global players, in this case, China. So 
this China position, like to look for a new international economic order, to look for a new political order. China talks about the democratization of inter foreign relationships. So this kind of stances make those Latin American countries and African countries support the decisions of uh, China. How China regards Latin America. For Latin American countries, uh, China is an example, because at the end, China achieved, well, was able to overcome all the hurdles and developed its own economy. So the Latin American and African countries say, how China, that used to have a little developed country, how since the economic reforms has achieved this growth for three consecutive uh, 30 consecutive years that have been able to achieve this position international that we wouldn't imagine that China would have it like 30 years ago. So that is why they regard it as a very important emerging force, a force that has influence in the international system. So as we said before, consultation mechanism are trying to be perfected to establish bilateral dialogue, high level dialogues, and also to maintain this vinculation that were allowed to make their voice to be heard in international organizations like the UN, the G20, the BRICS, and other international uh, organizations. Also, China, as feel as it feels an important partner in the global community has been emphasizing in the need of contributing to stop the global warming, like to put emphasis in energy safety and food safety. So in these matters is where China is putting a great deal of emphasis in organize, international organizations. The Latin American countries, more than African countries, are helping it to make her voice uh, to be heard. Like, why? Because China, even though it is a global actor, economically speaking, a country that has brilliantly uh, developed its economy, it is a country it is the largest country of the developing countries. So it feels like a leader of these developing countries. And that is how it says that it's about safeguarding the common interest of those developing countries. So all those uh, points will be reflected in the agenda of the relationship of uh, between China and Latin American countries. Now, China talks about this coopera global cooperation partners re relationship. What does that mean? For China, the, it is a guide to develop its relationships with Latin American region and also with African region. For China, it's really important to strengthen the unity and cooperation with all those countries. And that is why, as you see, this, the cornerstone of uh, independent foreign policy and the peace policy of China. So China is trying to coordinate its strategy towards Latin American countries and African countries. It is trying to, to build a new relationship that China says is based on equality and the reciprocal benefit and shared development. 
So this association of comprehensive partnership that wants to develop even more. Since the mid-90s, China started using partnerships with other countries to frame their bilateral relationships and then multilateral relationships. Back then, since, well, has built many relationships of this kind. They are hierarchical because as they, we add adjective to the association is we see how it flows and it goes deeper. A strategic, a strategic of cooperation, strate, uh, strategic of comprehensive participation. As we add more adjectives, this relationship goes deeper. So when we talk about the relationship, trade relationship between the countries of China and Latin America, you see the development of the trade between China and Latin America. How the exponential growth since 94 to 2014. But the problem with some countries, and in this case Mexico, it is the um, imbalance that exists between what Mexico imports from China and what Mexico exports. No, what China exports to Mexico and what Mexico exports to China. So we have this in trade imbalance. And this be, has been a discussion point in the negotiations between Mexico and China. So like in South American countries that have exported, that continue exporting raw material to China, are the ones that have been able to have an advantage in the trade relationship with China. In this chart, you see the distribution per sectors of direct foreign investment in Latin America by China. So what, what are the main characteristics of this investment? Is that this investment is in strategic sectors that are important for the growth of the Chinese economy. But China also has given credit to the Latin American countries. And those credits have been important for some of those countries. One of the countries that got the most benefit of those loans is Venezuela. And we will see in another chart how China was the one that received the most aid like from China. But unfortunately, with all the problems in Venezuela after the death of Hugo Chavez and now with President Maduro's, what the uh, Chinese government has done since then is no longer uh, uh, giving loans to Venezuela. And we will go deep in this uh, subject. So you can see here the amount that China lent to Latin American countries since 2005 has granted loans for more than 100 billion. Venezuela has been the most benefited with more than 50 billion American dollars paid with the shipments of oil to China. Argentina ranks second with 14 billion and Brazil with 13 billion dollars. But most of those loans are for infrastructure projects that China is financing in Latin America. So we see how China created the Cooperation Fund, China 
Latin America Cooperation Fund with more than $10,000 billion to invest in ex resources, exploitation, and infrastructure. So this is inside the idea of sustainable development of the Latin American continent. Now, China, because there's been criticism on his its presence in Latin America and the uh, investment on infrastructure projects in the trade relationship it has with Latin America has tried to show that they respect the characteristics of each one of the Latin American countries. They respect the agreements made with each one of them. And what is this all about is to share experiences. And those experiences that China has had in this development process could also help so the Latin American countries can take them into account. So for Latin American countries, this has all the investment has uh, from China in infrastructure project has been very important. All those countries needed investment for developing their highways, to develop the railroad systems, to uh, improve their ports. So this investment from China has been named at these uh, developments. Examples of this investment is the construction of the new Cuba port of a railroad, bioceanic railroad system between Peru and uh, Brazil, this so-called interoceanic canal in Nicaragua that at the end was stopped. There, were a, there was a lot of controversy because they said that this would affect all the vegetation area, the fauna, flora, that is very important in Nicaragua. And at the end, China has been able, since it established diplomatic relationship with Panama, that before it had it with Taiwan, and all the investments were done in Panama, the channel. So for China, this is a priority, the development in Panama. So as I said, this investment was stopped in Nicaragua. So here is the other chart I was referring to about the investment from China for Latin America. So Venezuela was the one that had the major investments in this area. But unfortunately, because of the conditions Venezuela ha is going through, are not the right ones to continue granting loans. Now, since 2015, China made concrete proposals on how this relationship, a win-win relationship between China and Latin America. So they created this select plan 2015-2019 where they continue emphasizing about the loans, the increase of trade, the Chinese investment in Latin American countries, and also to have operations in local currencies. So they are not using anymore the U.S. dollar because among the new Chinese policies is to strengthen even more their currency, internationalizing it, and this is a way of doing it. And that is why all the Chinese banks have expanded in several countries of Latin America. For what? To finance not all those projects, but also that the use, the most frequent use of the RAINBIMB in transaction. So we show all the railroads, the bioceanic railroad route. But Africa, what Africa means to the Popular Republic of China? 
Africa since the 70s It was important for the Popular Republic of China. It's going to happen a little bit like in Latin America. China will need the support of those countries in international organizations. And obviously, in this period, there's still the consideration, ideological consideration prevails. China continue talk, continues talking about fighting against imperialism and the economic links will be really limited. And as we said, during the 80s and 90s will be very important so to start developing the economic and economical relationship. Why? Because Africa is a continent that has a lot of raw materials. They have humongous natural resources and that is why it is important for China besides the markets. And the same thing, China uses again the idea of having fora to include all the ideas, all the strategy that will follow with these African countries. And we see how since the 2000, we have the first cooperation uh, forum, China-Africa in, in Beijing. Every three years, this fora is are uh, celebrated. But also in China, will go deeper in the relationship with Africa, African countries, trying to solve the problems with each of those countries. Because we talk about Africa in general, but Africa is very diverse. Each one of the countries have their own problems, specific problems, and. It has to adapt to the needs of each one of them. So we see how through these plans that are carried out in those fora, the strategy will be adapted that will be followed in the relationship with these countries. Now, the other aspect that is equally important that has made to like has strengthened not only the relationship with Latin American countries, but also with the relationship with African countries. China always have has said that respects the internal affairs of countries because she doesn't want the let people to like to middle in their own in its businesses. She, it does the same thing with other countries. Some time China is criticized for this because in the African countries you know how human uh, rights have been breached, how China has had relationships with arguable countries in terms of governance like Zimbabwe and Sudan. But China says I do not uh, mendle in their businesses. I respect each and every country. Well, this is totally different to the position of the European Union. The European Union, in order to give fi financing, the first thing they said is that they have to respect the human rights and try to improve your internal governance. Now, like in Latin America, Africa has been an ally of China, international fora, and China has highlighted that it, his, ex, that it expresses its solidarity with African countries and says the relationship should be based in equality, consultation, consensus, and friendship and mutual benefit, mainly in this region of Africa. China highlights the, the need of following a strategy that will help the African countries to mitigate poverty. China has been very successful in the mitigation of poverty. Many millions of China has uh, gone out from poverty with the economic reform. So China thinks that, it, that the African countries must be helped in order to overcome the poverty levels. 
and the other aspect that is highlighted by China to develop productive capabilities in each one of the African countries and also highlighting South-South cooperation, which is totally different from the North-South cooperation, cooperation, like with European countries and African countries. So. And we will see how it changes in Latin America since the 90s. That's when China starts to invest in African countries in infrastructure, construction, education, trade, and in the technical, cultural, and educational areas. And now, this has been successful. Why? Because they have reduced tariffs in their trade with China, and China has canceled some debt in some countries, and they have also worked to develop resources to improve education and also to improve health services. And I believe that China's effort is very important in the construction of buildings for hospitals, schools, sending experts to train other uh, professors and teachers in Africa. What we have also seen is an increase of China's investment in Africa, especially in the oil sector, like in Congo, Nigeria, uh, Sudan and Zambia. In Namibia, for agricultural investment, cotton production and textile production in Zambia, for example. There you can see this chart showing how trade with Africa has grown, exports, imports, Some African countries say that Chinese products have a non-loyal, disloyal competition and has caused some textile companies to go bankrupt. Precisely due, due to these reasons, China has tried to discuss this in a bilateral and multilateral manner in that China-Africa forum. As we said at the beginning, what China is looking for in Africa is all these raw materials that it needs. And Africa has important resources of all these raw materials. We will also see how China has established special economic zones as those that were in the 80s in China to foster the development of economy in these countries and to develop trade of those countries. As we said at the beginning, you can see all these examples where we can see how China has landed important amounts to African governments to develop infrastructure, to build schools, airports, dams. We have several examples of those building investments in these countries. At the Cooperation Forum, China, Africa, 2018, we see again how President Xi Jinping announces this new investment of 60 billion US dollars. And we have again the stress out of the five no's. No interference in the destiny of African countries according to their own decision. 
no interference in internal affairs, no imposition of our will, no political tie in assistance, no political gain in investment in the cooperation with Africa. Why this statement from Xi Jinping? Because China's policy has been criticized, especially in Latin American, sorry, African countries, because it has become a neo colonialist country it comes to Africa as the old European countries did, taking out raw materials from these countries, introducing its products to these markets, intervening in internal affairs as well, why they are selling weapons to Sudan in that terrible war, why China invests only in those places where they know they're going to obtain big gains. China says that they are trying to give job positions, but they bring their own workers, their own projects, and they are capital intensive, not labor intensive. All this criticism has been expressed. That's why in this forum of 2018, Xi Jinping made this statement in the sense that China respects policies of African countries and will not interfere in internal affairs. Another critic was that with all these loans, especially to countries that have corrupt governments that are no transparent governments, it has only created the existence of corrupt governments without any good political change and no economic policies are created that are really useful for development. With these statements of Xi Jinping, China is stressing out that China will keep these features in its relationships with these African countries. Now, the challenges of Latin American and African country relationships with China. What have we seen relating to China? We have seen how Chinese leadership has certainly followed economic policies leading to growth and development in the China economy. We've seen how as economic reforms have advanced, this growth in economics has reflected in the well-being of Chinese population, how several sectors of the Chinese population have attained a better living standard. And as we said, millions of Chinese have abandoned extreme poverty because finally we've seen perseverance and with this we have the transformation and modernization of China's economy. One of the points that I always stress out in my conferences is precisely this one. In China they set goals up once they do it, they work to fulfill them. This is very important. If you only set goals and do not fulfill them, everything remains at the middle of the way. In the case of China, they show perseverance. It's important in attaining those goals. 
the fact that the economic model was changed since 2012, it certainly it is implicit the change of relationships, and I think that they are overcoming this with all the negotiations that they have started in recent years. The most important thing is that what African, Latin American countries should do to take advantage of this relationship with China. You can expect a lot of things from this relationship. They believe that China will resolve all their problems. This is not true. At the end, China is following its own goals. They have their own strategy, schedule, how they will advance. They already have their own project. And this is what Latin American countries should do. They need to implement reforms in their own countries, which are necessary so they also have their economic modernization programs, and they could also have a sustained growth. China will not resolve their problems. That's the point. As I said, China has its own program, and they are doing it according to their own goals on the next stage, what China will do to make their companies more competitive. Latin American countries and African countries should also establish their goals, what they want from their relationship with China, how they're going to negotiate with China. So they should develop their own strategies and rules to make more effective the use of resources coming from China. Now, talking about infrastructure investment, China has been criticized of doing infrastructure investments, making it easier to take out raw materials from these countries. These countries should also think about their priorities. They should put this on the table during their negotiations with China. In this way, the relationship with China will become more efficient, and resources coming from China could be harnessed and we can also develop intra-regional trade and also regional value chains because it is needed in Latin America. They cannot continue exporting only raw materials. They need to develop their value chains and transform their products that are exporting to China. Only in this way, they can have a more equalitarian relationship with China. And as I said before, they could take advantage of all what China is offering in the area of investment, financing, and trade exchange. It is very important to take this into consideration from Latin American countries and African countries. In the case of Africa, I know it's a little bit more difficult. In the case of Latin America, several countries like Chile, Argentina, and Mexico, they're certainly trying to establish a stronger base in their relationship with China, and this is it on my part. Thank you very much for your attention.
Para mí es un honor darle esta diploma de participación, este certificado. Muchas gracias por la información que nos ha dado. Muchas gracias.